Hey, everybody. Welcome to a, an episode of Health Ignited. And listen, we're talking to a, a friend of ours that I haven't yet met in person, actually, but I've, I've had many conversations with uh, <laughs> online. Uh, his name is Gavin Curry, and he's a massive advocate for uh, the, the world of addictions and recovery and has, has spent many years helping, to, helping people through this pain and, and this uh, process of recovery and has seen things from all different sides. And so... Um, I'm a partner with him uh, through a program called the Agora Regeneration Clinic, which is an addiction recovery program that we have installed in our clinic. And uh, basically, we want to just start bringing some attention to this really important topic of addiction and uh, so what's being done conventionally. What are some other options outside of that realm? Uh, should people decide, desire to look a little bit deeper? And also being cognizant of the underlying trauma, which is basically our, you know, our capacity to deal with our environment, you know, the stressors, our upbringing, our different toxic exposures, and uh, and all wrapped into one, which leads us, you know, even chronic pain, which eventually leads us down a path of uh, substance abuse of some way, shape, or form. So. Gavin, thank you so much for being here and uh, dive in and, and share a little bit about uh, your history and, and what got you interested in this area. Yeah. Hi, Nick. Um, thanks, for, thanks for having us on your, on your uh, webcam. Uh, okay. So I originally um, graduated from the University of Edinburgh with, with a master's in, in social work and um, I entered the field of child protection. Um, child protection was something close to my heart. And um, you know, I, what I found when, when, when I entered the field of, of social work and, and child protection in particular was that, you know, the vast majority of, of, of child abuse cases, whether it was neglect, whether it was physical abuse, emotional abuse, you know, 90, in excess of 90% of these cases had substance misuse at the very core. And that was a, a, a that was a startling statistic for me. That 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 was the, the, an early realization for me that you know, wow, you know this that, 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 this is this is the chaotic impact on 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 the very very early stages, if you like, of you know a, a young person's life, and and it was something which which sat with me through you know my first few years in in, in social work, um, and and edged me towards you know entering into that field, mm -hmm. and that was basically my first light bulb moment if you like um if that's the right choice of words that you know substance misuse is as 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 one of these sort of taboo subjects which you know is is under investigated but yet massively massively um underestimated if you like if that's a you know the right choice of words mm -hmm. Yeah, so like being in these environments or seeing families because it's obviously impacting the entire family unit in this journey um and you saw that there's this common thread of, of substance use and substance abuse. Um, yeah. What, what were some of the solutions or how did you support people in this, in this paradigm uh, in those early years? Well, I, I operated from what we class as a community addiction team. So we're community based services and um, you know, there'd be various sort of health partners. There would be, you know, you know, health, social work, you know, we call it the voluntary sector, charity sector, um, obviously, police, education, etc. So, so it was a kind of multidisciplinary response. Um, you know, sort of supporting supporting the family. In terms of substance misuse itself, you know, hi, you know, highlighting the the, the the services which targeted substance misuse. Um, what I found was 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 was, to be honest with the ineffectiveness. You know, what people were getting was you know, a very sort of medically orientated model, which um, would would result in maybe, you know, every few weeks, you know, attending their GP. For example, let, 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 let's take, you know, the, the, the sort of current opioid epidemic as, as, as quite a prevalent theme. So, you know, somebody who was, was, was addicted to opiates or heroin, you know, whether it be street heroin or whether it be, you know, a pharmaceutical, you know, such as dihydrocodone, um, you know, they, 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 would, they, would, they would see their, you know, the GP or their, or their addiction, you know, counsellor maybe, you know, every few weeks. And uh, more often than not, it would be very much a, a, a quick examination of a method on script. And, uh, and, and, you know, if you're lucky, something which maybe resembled 20 minutes of, of, of a 
a psychosocial intervention, you know, and, 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 you know, what we mean by that is 20 minutes of anything that resembled some sort of counseling approach. And, and it was a tick box exercise really. And, 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 and it was, it was, it was vastly ineffective. You know, people were, people were parked on, and I say parked because I think that's the right choice of words. People were parked on a, a methadone program and, um, you know, even, even the most, um, you know, even even the biggest supporters of the methadone program, I think, would admit that you know the program itself hasn't worked in the way that that it was foreseen. And 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 I used to look at the statistics, you know, and and I wondered why that that the people were so static and and, and non-moving on these programs. And then when I came across, you know, the, the the workings of of how the services came together, like I've just described. How on earth can you progress from that? You know, how on earth can you, you know, you, you're talking about trauma and, and you know, um, adverse life circumstances. You know, 20 minutes of, 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 of brief therapy with, with, with a, a tick box, you know, a review of, of the method and script. Yeah, is it any wonder? Yeah. yeah. Well, it, yeah, I mean, and how you're describing things is, is from what, my exposure is to to things over here in North America is a pretty standard approach. I mean, we know even in con- conventional medical care, things in general move at a somewhat snail's pace. We can we can see that you know research that's being done in different areas of say nutrition or immunology or or even the gut microbiome is is yeah. often way ahead of where things are operating in clinical practice. And I imagine Absolutely. it's not that there's bad doctors out there. It's just the protocols, as you said, are just archaic to the point where we're just managing somewhat of, of, the, of the problem, but not actually taking steps forwards to get to an underlying correction of the problem. And it's kind of like, yeah. you know, the, the process of conventional medicine in general is to treat the symptom and not the root cause. Yeah. So, I mean, at some point you get frustrated. So tell us, so <laughs> you see that things are not progressing in the way you'd like. And what do you do when you're, uh, you know, working in that system, doing your best to also follow the guidelines of how you're being told to support people? Tell us what it's like being uh, in your shoes. Yeah, it's very difficult. You become, um, actually, the, 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 there's a, an example I want to share with you guys, but, um, you know, you become almost hypocritical in your approach because, you know, you're working within a system which, you know, some people recognize the frailties, others choose to ignore, others are blissfully ignorant. But there are, you know, those of us out there who, you know, have the... Have the um, I suppose have the have the passion and 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 the, the grittiness, if you like, to look beyond the veil and 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 really question things. And and there was a particular tipping point for me, um, which which you know was was a point of no return. And I had been working with a family who, you know, both 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 parents were were on the methadone program and had. Um, had, but we're down to about the last few mils of methadone. Now, you know, for, for the viewers out there, an average sort of an average per se uh, methadone user will be about seventy to hundred milligrams of of, of, of methadone. That, that's that's your kind of average user. Below that, you're you're, you're starting to taper down, and above that, is, is probably looked upon as as, as as high use. So, this family we're down to the last to roughly about two to five mils which is, is, is a relatively low dose. And, and they had been at that for oh, months, weeks, if not months. And um, this is quite a, 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 a common theme, you know, that, that you know, methadone, whether, whether, you know, people say it's a psychological element, that others say, you know, it's, it's a combination of psychological and, and, and obviously the, the physical, you know, addiction to, to the methadone. Which, by the way, is, is, is in my experience, is a lot more um, addictive than, than, than heroin itself. Mm. Now, get your head around that for a second. Um, people will say, you know, wow, is that possible? But when you see the impacts that methadone has on the body, you know, it, it gets into the bones, it's laced with sugar, you know, I mean, 
methadone in itself, you know, is, 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 is addictive in so many ways. So, I mean, I'm, I'm meandering off topic here, but to get back back on topic, um, you know, the last few mils of methadone, and, and this was going on for months, and at the time it was a child protection case. So I had to do my weekly visit. And um, on, on, on one morning, you know, uh, and I had a great relationship with this family. One morning I opened the door, and as soon as, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the person opened the door, um, the the eyes were, were the opiate pinprick eyes, so mm. I knew that, that, that something had, had had gone wrong, and instantly I said, you know, you know, listen, have a seat, you know, what, what's going on, you know, I, I know you've you've used in some form again, you're doing so well, tell me about it, and um, he said, you know, he said he said Gavin, I just could not get off of methadone, I've been trying for months, weeks, months, I can't do it. You know, I wish I'd never started on the programme. He said, I'm going to be honest with you, what I did over the weekend was the jail detox. Now, jail detox are, you know, as a common uh, sort of slang term here for, for what um, prisoners are getting jail to come off of heroin. And that is an opiate-based painkiller, normally dihydrocodine and a benzodiazepam. So, you know, whether it's Valium, whatever. So a benzo and an opiate painkiller and they wean them off. Um, so he had done that himself. And this can be weaned off fairly quickly using that method, which puts you onto different tangents again. However, you know, he said, he explained all this and, you know, um, I understood why he did it. I actually couldn't argue with why he did it. But unfortunately, you know, there was, there was two children in the house and, and with child protection procedures, I had to remove the children. And that was hard. That was hard. That was a tipping point for me. That was a turning point where um, I just had to turn my back on conventional methods and two weeks later I moved into the field of, of social work education um, and I left I, I left frontline social work altogether so it shows you the impact it had on me you know and, and I think there's a lot of workers out there that are frustrated with the system but don't necessarily have the, the, the means and the knowledge to you know as you say replace these with better ways of, of, of doing things. And that was a real tipping point for me. That 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 was that was that was that was a real sort of crossroads in, in, in my career. And that led me on to looking for better ways of doing things. So, you know, moving on to you know your nutrition and, and energy medicine and, and, and different forms of, of, of you know psychology and NLP and, and you know functional medicine. And that's where I eventually, you know, found the, the some of the keys to, you know, unlocking um people's struggles and hardships and, and, and desperation and hopelessness. Wow. That's such a powerful story. And it's, and it's one that's so, so universal. I mean, that's, that's one story of potentially millions of people around the world. I yeah. mean, if we look to the numbers of, of people uh, with addiction, uh, with known addiction, like, like the, um, like you said, conventional therapies, methadone. I mean, this is something that a doctor is prescribing for people and people get there in many different ways. It could be post injury or surgery or, yeah, it could be the simplest of ways and you can have someone and we've seen it in our program as well someone who's living a very normal life um you know by all typical standards an accident happens they get put on a medication their life is in a downward spiral i mean Absolutely. after this so can you like you you alluded to this that that methadone is technically more addictive than heroin like that's a that's a pretty unfortunate statistic or reality and something that you've seen just because there's so much animosity and taboo around heroin yet this methadone yeah. being a more addictive substance is something that's being prescribed so talk about that a little bit because i think that was fascinating when you said that yeah i mean it's probably quite a controversial statement to make you know and and and, and you know, we could we could rhyme off stats and figures all day long, but you know, I, I prefer to you know think about you know solutions rather than the folk, you know focusing on problems per se. But you know, my experiences are based upon working on the front line. You know, these are these aren't statistics that I've read off a newspaper or you know, or maybe that's a, a, a bad choice of, of of examples. But you know, a journal or you know a publication. Um, you know, these 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 are these are real stories that I've encountered on the on the on the front line. You know, and and as you say, I I, I took the example there of of somebody you know who, who was using street heroin, 
I've encountered, you know, athletes with 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 chronic back pain. Yeah. I've encountered mm-hmm. people with, you know, fibromyalgia. I've encountered all sorts of, you know, people with 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 with, with chronic, you know, sort of pain and and, and symptoms who have been over prescribed, you know, opioids, and, and before they know it, you know, they are uh, they are basically taken off of these opioids, you know, fairly quickly, yeah. um, mm-hmm. and they 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 can't cope. You know, and, 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 and what do they do? So so they they, they, they abuse prescription drugs, um, and, and that leads them down to new connections, new relationships, and all of a sudden they take that step into an alternate set of circumstances, of relationships, of people, of settings, and it snowballs from there. Totally. And, 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 and and as you say, people with, with, with people lose everything. You know, yeah. people people have have you know their their jobs, their loved ones, um, their homes, and, and and very very quickly that can that can crumble. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, as you said, I mean, being on the front lines, I mean, you're seeing stuff that that you know most of us just read about, you know. But this is the impact that's having in high functioning individuals, and kind of as you're saying, I'm sort of assuming what you're saying. It's like you almost they almost keep getting used to a new normal. It's like things get to bad and then you adjust and then they kind of get worse and then you adjust. And before you know it, you're, you know, months away um, down the line of being in the, the thick of this addiction and you can't see who you used to be. Your, your version, a fraction of who you once were. And people need to understand just, you know, it's not as easy as just saying, Hey, I'm just going to stop. Everything's going to be go back to normal. There's so much against you from a a brain, you know, change point of view, uh, that, that sort of just receptor experience of the biochemistry, uh, the behavior changes, the change in diet, the change in activity, the, you know, the change, like you said, in circumstances around like even loved ones and family that, that sort of get tired of, you know, the, the new behavior that's shown up. And so, Let's talk about that a little bit, just, just the dismantling yeah. of, of, uh, of what that looks like. And then we're going to definitely talk, start talking about some other options, as, as you referred to, because we want to definitely add some levity to this conversation. Yeah. But yeah. it's important to understand, you know, all these permutations that show up. Yeah, I think, I mean, I was speaking to somebody about this the, uh, the other day, actually, in the field. And, you know, it, you know addiction is as a... A disease and inverted commas of, of of isolation, you know, uh, and and that's quite pertinent given you know current circumstances. Totally. Um, but you know, it's 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 you're right in terms of families. It's it's very much the elephant in the room, mm-hmm. you know, for for a family because you know it's 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 something which is very you know taboo. It's 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 a disease of of, of isolation, of, of denial, of secrecy. You know, something that's to be you know almost sort of swept under the carpet and you know given sort of, you know, uh, you know, blame and fault and, 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 and all these things, you know, come together to prevent people from looking for help. And so, you know, where do these people go, you know, and, 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 and you're right. And, 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 and society doesn't exactly make it easy for people, you know, to, to, to gain access to services, which, you know, are, are just available, let alone are effective. I'll give you an example. You know, again, working on the front line. You know, trying to trying to um, trying to book into sort of you know um, we call it local authority, um, government funded um, services. You know, years ago, um, that was a fairly common you know thing to happen, but with austerity cuts. Um, you know, in terms of like, you know, basically a lack of welfare services and a lack of welfare spending, people just don't have the access to rehabilitation and recovery services. So the, the situation I mentioned to you before about the community based, you know, services, which has already been cut and funding, etc. Um, then it was just a, a whirlpool of hopelessness. So you, you, on one hand, you have the family setting, which is, you know, shame, denial, taboo. Then you have a community-based setting, which, you know, is, is, is ineffective in its response. So you have this sort of isolating, lonely hole of, of, of despair and, 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 and hopelessness. And, and where do these people turn? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that's, that's, I, I love how you describe things because, you know, and, and that just goes to show someone who's seen people in it and helped them through it. You see the, the real empathy uh, in, in how you speak about this situation. It's really, I mean, it's beautiful to hear that you've put so much of your, yourself into, into these people's lives so you can really understand where they're coming from. And uh, which is why I'm so grateful to be connected with you because you get to see the other side that I've just never seen and, and, and how we work with people in the outpatient type clinic setting. It's more like these people are now ready to find different solutions. So yeah, uh, one thing yeah. that you, go ahead. A lot, I, I, what I was going to say though, a lot of time people have to hit that rock bottom phase before they can rise up again, yeah. you know, um, but it's, it's how you catch them. You know, it's how, how, you know, sometimes for people when they hit that raw bottom phase, they don't come back up and, and, we, and we lose them, you know, and, and it's that hard hitting. So as you say, when, when they come to, you know, you guys at the sort of clinical setting, you know, these have been the lucky ones who have had, you know, the support or the intervention at the correct time. And I've got to you guys, you know, an awful lot slipped through the net. Oh, so many, so many. And that's, you know, that would be a dream to see enough of the social services change to support people in yeah. re-education, reintegration, and, and properly um, fixing the biochemical, neurochemical yeah. addictive process yeah. that's just showing up and the social spiritual one and, and everything yeah. else. So now some of these medications, these heavier ones that we're referring to, uh, the methadones and, you know, those that use the street drug or heroin and, and, and unfortunately fentanyl and some of the other things that get into the mix, um, often these people, that's not the only medication they're on. So tell, walk us down sort of like what happens next to manage some of that despair, that, um, that loneliness that they're feeling. What are some other common prescriptions that you're seeing some of these people go on? Well, this is, this, this is another thing, you know, I mean, a, a, a person will, will present to recovery, you know, addiction services with, with, with a single, single illicit use. And before they know it, they're on several drugs which which are of you know an acceptable um, nature. So you know you might have you know drugs to help you know stabilise mood, um, you know your antidepressants. You know we all know from Prozac to you know various other ones. You may have drugs to regulate sleep. Um, you know you may have drugs to you know uh, regulate anxiety. Um, the, the whole cocktail, you know, there's a, there's a tra there's a line in train spotting, which is 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 Scottish uh, Scottish film as you know about about heroin use and um, it's been a while since I've seen train spotting actually, but it just came to my head there and and I think it was I think it was uh, um, I think it was Begby, I'm not too sure, but anyway he says that you know when you become a heroin addict you only ever have one problem. And, 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 and that, that line summed up beautifully because, you know, going back to, you know, you may have, you know, relationship problems, you know, childhood trauma, you may have, you know, lost your job, you may have become homeless. And with that one hit, everything, you know, disappears. And then you only have that one problem of finding that single drug. Now, the reason I'm mentioning that line is because, you know, Sometimes it's like, well, what is the lesser of the evils? Because now you have a number of prescribed acceptable drugs, which, you know, are all interfering with the toxicity of the body in different ways, all have their own addictive properties. And all of a sudden, you know, instead of, you know, coming off of one illicit, you're coming off of two, three, four, five, often, you know, prescribed, which again, can be more difficult to come off you know, I mean, you know yourself, you know, mm -hmm. antidepressants have to be tapered off of a, a, a long, long, long withdrawal. Um, benzo, benzodiazepines, you know, sleeping tablets, wh wh whatever, you know, form they come in, you know, in my experience are worse, are, are, are worse than, 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 than heroin. You know, a, a, a benzo withdrawal, wow, you know, it, it makes a heroin withdrawal look like child's play. Mm -hmm. So, you know, from, 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 from heroin to, to benzos to, you know, all your antidepressants, you know, to all, all of these sort of cocktail, uh, it's, it's a, 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 a cauldron, if you like, of, of toxicity, which the, their body then has to work even harder, you know, to, 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 to maintain its homeostasis and, 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 and regulate its, its own systems. And, and, you know, it's, 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 this is why we're seeing 
the people were saying. You know, um, this is going off topic a little bit, but uh, I have a friend who's a, who's, who's a Gerson therapist, mm-hmm. uh, and um, he 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 said to me, you know, for for, for the viewers out there, Gerson therapy uses, you know, very very specific organic nutrition to overcome chronic and degenerative uh, disease. Um, he's saying now that the length of time on Gerson therapy, uh, it used he used to, you know, maybe ten years ago. 15 years ago, you know, the, the, the length of time you would have to do Gerson therapy would now be at least doubled. And that's because of the, the toxicity of the body. Yeah. And I think what yeah. in the addictions field is something similar. I think that, you know, even with, with, with Agora um, and, and the wonderful formulas and techniques and interventions that we have and, and, and we'll come on to talk about um, shortly or in later episodes, um, it's, it's even becoming more challenging, you know, with 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 our fantastic intervention with the people we're getting through the door now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that you said that. Thing. Yeah, I love you said that. I mean, this is something I tell patients, regardless of what's going on. You know, you in in the past, it was much easier to just do everything through nutrition. Um, you know, do some exercise, and it's it's unfortunate that that's how we constitute what's considered to be healthy. We look at people on the outside and go, oh, they they must have something going on because they look healthy. Uh, it goes way beyond that, and yeah. it goes it goes into the, you know, the chemistry of the soil and the yeah. biodynamic farming, and you know, all the other Absolutely. pieces that go into what our food more resembled as opposed to now. You know, and then you know the modern day stressors and modern day toxicity the yep. the pillaging of our soil and you know herbicides and chemicals and glyphosate yep. and you know the heavy metals in our environment i mean we're we it's harder to be human you know this is a quote from rudolf steiner from back in actually 1917 he was saying you know it's harder to be a human more so now than ever and that was like 100 years well, ago so <laughs> do you know why essentially Nick, because you know we no longer live in our environment our environment lives in us yeah you know and and and, and if i could sum it up in one line it would probably be that you know our environmental toxicity our, our, our cup is overflowing you yeah. know um and and you know and it manifests in in, in different ways and 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 as you see addiction is, is just one of these you know fields in which has been as, exacerbated you know by mm. these these current you know environmental conditions yeah and you know as we talked about in the beginning it's like when when there's no real hope in a conventional system other than through management through drug therapy um it's just kind of maintaining the status quo and it's not yeah. again this has nothing to do with doctors being good or bad at what they do they're just following yeah. algorithms on protocols Absolutely. of how you're supposed to quote unquote yeah. help people in these kind of situations so um yeah. there's so much here everybody i mean we just sort of scratched the surface on part of the problem and we do want to come at you with some solution based um, information as well, which I think we'll dive into a lot great more, a lot more detail on further calls. But we want to kind of keep this succinct to part of the problem, um, and uh, and part of the solution is really to unpack the environment uh, that, as you said, I love how you said that is now living within us. We have to unpack the interference so that we can allow the natural immunity, the natural levity of the nervous system and and the brain chemistry and the gut chemistry the microbiome and bring all this back to life so that we can be more harmonious with our environment so we're going to dive into a whole lot more information as we go along with these episodes but what do you what would you say to people like that are stuck in this framework that they're in um what what is some some pieces of hope because no doubt you've seen some people come out of situations um either through conventional means or through, you know, this new way of, of working with addictions. But what can you say to people that maybe are in the middle of something or know someone who is? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think, you know, I think societies, I think societies, I mean, somebody asked me, you know, what do you think has changed? You know, what do you think has changed? Why, 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 why addiction? You know, why the massive, massive increase and, and, and people using substances, you know, and, and, and I, I think it's disconnectedness. You know, I, I think people now are more, you know, disconnected than ever before to, to each other, to nature, mm. to, you know, the planet Earth, 
you know, and I, th I think the, the, the human spirit is, is, is something which, you know, is, is to be, um, to be marveled at because I, I, I have seen so many people come through mainstream, you know, approaches and, and, and through sheer willpower alone and continue to stay abstinent through sheer willpower alone. And, and, and I think, you know, any, my, my, my advice to, 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 to somebody against that backdrop is that it, you know, the, the human spirit is, 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 is capable of great things, but it doesn't have to be that way. You don't have to live the rest of your life um, constantly thinking every day about, you know, um, whatever your, your, your substance of choice was and battling that every day. You know, I mean, there's lots of, I mean, we can, again, this is for another topic, but, you know, 12 step or other, you know, um, you know, sort of anonymous meetings, you know, whether it's A, any, whatever, you know, and, and, and these are very much of, of, of recovery based community approaches to, to holding that human spirit. And I always marvel because, you know, you have people standing up and, and, and saying, you know, hi, my name is, you know, Gavin and, and I'm an alcoholic, you know, every week for the next 20 years. And it's almost like self, you know, self-affirmating. Mm -hmm. And like, wow, you know, it's no wonder these people after 20 odd years, you know, are, are, are having to battle, you know, those, those feelings of, 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 you know, that tipping point of almost wanting a drink again. And, and, and you know, so my message, I guess, would be, you know, that, that, that there are other methods um they are um becoming more available and you know the the the, the internet is a, is a wonderful thing now you know go online do your research you know and and find people who will will, will guide and direct you to the appropriate services because you had you hit on a, a good point there nick you know and, and i want to make this clear Throughout my time of, of, of experiencing the frailties and, and ineffectiveness of, 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 of mainstream approaches, I very, very seldomly came across somebody in the addiction field who wasn't out to do well, who wasn't committed, and, you know, who wasn't all for their, their, their clients. So, you know, I, I, I think there's hope. I think there's, 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 there's ways out of, 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 of the situation people are in. I think we just need to take that, that that human spirit we all have, and and um, you know, and, and and use our resources to 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 be in touch with what's out there. Mm, yeah. <laughs> love it. I mean, when when Sonia and I talk about you know a reconnection for all of us to get back to our roots, to um, you know, whether it be a lifestyle program or or through addiction recovery, like you you hit the nail on the head, man. Like that's that's it we have to reconnect and realize we're so much more powerful than we've given, we've given yeah. ourselves credit for. Absolutely. And everything you're speaking to is exactly uh, in alignment. And every time I hear you speak, I just like, I feel closer to you. Like we're, we're brothers in wellness, man. And, and you know, we're, we're speaking the same message as different experiences and, and so working yeah. towards yeah. that common goal, but that's totally it. It's, it's that reconnection piece that people need to plug back in and, yeah. And realize that there there is hope and there's opportunity and Absolutely. and uh, they don't have to be alone. So that's an amazing yeah. message. Yeah. Thanks. So um, thanks, thanks, thank thanks. you so much for uh, for being on the call today. We this is just everyone who's listening. This is just the beginning of many videos. We're gonna dive oh. into so much more content. Oh, but we Tip did one. Iceberg, really. Oh, totally. <laughs> totally. So we, we get, wet we the could palette. Be, we could be talking here for the next two weeks, Nick. Uh, yeah, literally. <laughs> Without stopping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just it. If you want to know more, I mean, stay tuned. Uh, look up Agora Regeneration Clinics. Uh, Agorahealth.net, I believe, is the other one. Uh, yeah. Check out Gavin on Facebook. You're constantly putting out amazing content that help uh, illuminate people to uh, more strategies that can help people in recovery. And uh, you're about to launch Agora uh, out in your neck of the woods in the next yeah, little bit. Yeah, in the bit. UK, yeah, in Scotland. Yeah. That's exciting. Very, very exciting. So when when are you actually starting? Do you know? Do you have a rough date? Well, with the with the, <laughs> the, the current lockdown, that's that's been put on pause. But we're just going through all our um, all our trials for our, our wonderful amino acid formulas just now, which, as you know, will be repairing and regenerating the, the neurotransmitters and the and the synapses of the brain. 
Um, so all these things are going on just now. Um, it's going to be this year. It's going to be summertime. We were hoping for sort of of, of, of late April time, but obviously now mm-hmm. we're put on hold. But it's 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 uh, yeah, it's, it's 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 gathering speed. So we're all excited. That's right. Yeah, it's so good. And yeah, it's unfortunate timing with the with the lockdown. And you yeah. know, we we look forward to when people can access your services and um, and learn more. But in the meantime, you know, start following what uh, Gavin's been saying and, and stay tuned for more videos because there's lots more information to come. Yeah. So thanks. Thanks again, Gavin. Thanks, Nick. Speak to you soon. Yeah. Bye.